Well, our next two guests really need no introduction, but we'll do it anyway. They're both award-winning veterans of the screen and stage. She's been seen in such films as Medea's Family Reunion and Ease Bayou, and he had roles in Ray and Rush Hour, just to name a few. Yes, and well, they're both starring in My Brother Marvin, a play about the life of the late singer Marvin Gaye. Please welcome to Arise Entertainment 360, Lynn Whitfield and Clifton Powell. Hi! Hello. Thank you so much for being yes. here. You both look incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So do I you cannot all. believe you Thank are you. veterans. Right? <laughs> you look too young to be veterans. I, I know. Like that. Can we change that? I yeah. Mean, the <laughs> veterans and decade business needs to go. <laughs> okay. We'll cut all that out. Okay. That's just okay. between us. <laughs> so you're currently starring in the new, this new play, and you're playing Marvin Gaye's mother, Alberta, yes. and you're playing Marvin Gaye Sr., correct? Uh, um, uh, yeah. So I, what? I, I think that's what I'm doing. Oh, you can do <laughs> and directing. And, 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 and directing. Oh, a little bit of well, I, I get a chance to play the dad, and she directs me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, 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 I'm directing and playing Marvin's father, but it's just, the whole thing is just so incredibly wonderful to be a part of, so. So what good. drew you both to the project? Well, first, Marvin Gaye, loving him, mm -hmm. but yes, knowledge yes. of the project and the invitation actually stemmed from Mr. Powell. Yeah, we, we were working on another little independent film. Yeah, uh, yeah, we were working on a movie called The North Star. And of course, you know, I love Lynn's work. Of course. And ironically, we have so many ties in D.C. And, um, you know, when they approached me, they said, who do you think? And I, you know, the, the play has just taken on another shape in terms of before it was a musical with a little drama. Mm. Now it's a drama with a little music, so. Yeah. Um, I like and, that. Uh, I like that. Working beside my, my friend right here is incredible. I can only we have imagine. a lot of fun. Did you all know each other before? Yes. Okay, had you yeah. worked on a project together or is yeah, this the North first one? Star. Yeah, North Star. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you did say and that. And pri prior to that, we, we <laughs> prior That's to that, we seen. Lots of I'm, so, I'm just like <laughs> blown away by how beautiful you are. I'm like. <laughs> That's, that's a good excuse. Okay. okay good. Tell no, me anything. She said, she said that's fine. Then. Go ahead. Do it again. Do it again. No, prior, prior to that, you know, we've, we've seen each other out and talked okay. a little bit. But you know, sometimes when you do, you see somebody at a premiere or you mm -hmm. talk, you never get a chance to really, you know. Right. But well, you know what actually happened? We did when the we thing did, in North Carolina. We did, we did a little something in North Carolina, and then we both started to recognize we come from, we had some of the same mentors and teachers mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. you know, out of Duke Ellington mm -hmm. and Howard University. And we slowly started to recognize yeah. that what we're really about is the work yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. loving the work itself. Yeah. Yeah. And the more we did that, by the time we left Northstar, which was a hard guerrilla filmmaking mm -hmm. experience yeah. about abolitionists, you know, in huh. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, okay, I really believe you now. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're about the work. Mm -hmm. I said, I am. I told you that. I don't know why you're telling people to walk around. I love well, acting. We were on the set and they were like, Lynn Whitfield's come out, like, gotta clean those trailers, get this thing. <laughs> she's, she's a big star. And we have this. She said, Will you stop? I'm just mm. a regular actress, but I'm about, about the this work. work. And, and, so, and I had this huge page and page monologue, yeah. remember? Uh -huh. And it was just, and once we started to realize that, and then he invited me and said, you know, we're going to do this. If I call you, do you think you'd be interested? Mm. And we've been, you know, in the trenches, in the trenches yeah. hulling out some very intricate and complicated relationships yeah. between Marvin Sr. and the and and Alberta and Marvin and the rest of the family. Yeah. Well, you're speaking of relationships, you guys have worked together before, but this time you're playing husband and wife. Yeah. So how is that relationship? How is the play husband and wife? Well, I guess it works for him because Alberta, <laughs> because Alberta was rather very, you know, compliant mm -hmm. and went along with the program. And father, well, you can speak for father. Father, father's very complicated, mm. and father was um, an old school guy who mm. believed that women kind of—I don't want to say what father believed—but he came out of the era where women kind of was seen and not heard from, you know. Mean, and yeah. Alberta, uh, uh, fortunately was a gentle spirit, and, and father had a very powerful and overpowering personality. So and, what, oh, I'm sorry. And, and so it's, you know, we have some really interesting, troubling scenes sometimes mm -hmm. together. Because so, even though he was an old school guy, there were some very complex and sophisticated um, dysfunctions mm -hmm. going on <clears throat> within the family. So we're, tr you know, working out the balance of of those, mm -hmm. it's not 
really just that simple mom and pop kind of thing. Right. Uh, otherwise, it would never, because we know, we know how the story began, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, we know how it ended. Tragically. And what we are filling in is what led up mm -hmm. to gotcha. that day. How did you get there? Yeah. So what did you do to prepare for this? Because it seems like you get really deep in this place. So what, did you watch archival footage, listen to old music? What did you do to tap into those characters? Well, for me, I mean, the, what we're doing is it's, there's no footage for Family Secrets. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, usually, there's mm -hmm. not footage for that. We have the great fortune of having Ziola. Ziola Gay, who's Marvin's baby sister, who's there, okay. who helps guide us through, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's still intricate work for an actress to find. Lynn is, has probably had some qualities like mother, but is not mother internally mm -hmm. in how, how she thinks. So she has to go back in and substitute and move stuff around in her own life and borrow to find mother's spirit, because mother was probably a lot different than, I would say, contemporary women of today. Yes, mm. because, you know, you know, I'm a Louisiana woman, and I don't suffer foods gladly. Yeah. So, you know, Ms. Lynn Whitfield's to, not having it. Uh, no. You know, but I mean, you yeah. know, you, to allow things that you know aren't good for you and for your family, right. you know, and and it, but, uh, women of certain periods of time, mm -hmm. you know, I played a woman like that in Eve's Bayou, mm -hmm. which is a film you, you, you mentioned, you know, who turned a blind eye to things and mm -hmm. didn't say it's all about the family staying right. together and where and so that's my job because mm -hmm. actors have different jobs and Clifton's job what I've watched him do is to find a way to make normal Fathers. the dysfunctions Dysfunction. of this father and you have to you really have to not to interject I mean no, not to cut no. you off but it's really difficult uh, we just did an interview at CNN and and the woman who interviewed us saw the play mm -hmm. and she was blown away she, and, and it got so intricate and it's it's some things that we can't talk about because you'll give away the whole beginning 15 minutes of the play but father was a very layered and complicated man who came from family dysfunctions 25 35 40 years ago that he passed on uh, to the children and mother was in the middle trying to do her best to prevent some of the some of the things that we saw Marvin go through. You know, and in a way, because I was just at the the uh, <coughs> Afrif, which is a, the an African film festival yes. in Nigeria mm -hmm. in Lagos. I was their ambassador mm -hmm. for uh, for yeah. one year, and then um, I'm supposed to go back this year. And I was also at the their Academy Awards, also in Lagos. Wow. And many of the film that I films that I saw. Mm -hmm. We, we deal with the same thing in the African American, African diasporic phenomena of generational curses. Mm. And it may come from a spiritual, a, a place of, yeah. you know, or whatever, you know, Shango or whatever is going on in different religions. And it's also in the Christian religion. So this is, and I understand, and I was so delighted to know that your show, you know, because we're gonna, people are gonna hear about our play now. Yeah. What, in Lagos, all, mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. and, and so it really has a lot of thematically, many of the things that I saw, or themes I saw running through film in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, by African people by from African different countries, right. yes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, you, you know, there's a Marvin Gaye movie in the works as well. Why do you think his life is receiving so much attention now? Well, the same reason that his music has affected all music all over the world mm. for the last 40 years. Why? Because he's iconic. And you know how universal consciousness is. Some things just seem to all start, you know, taking shape mm -hmm. and you know the universe shines a light and says all right it's your turn again mm -hmm. to to be to be and seen that people yeah. need to know mm -hmm. because everything he was talking about and what's going on right it's coming up now i mean it's all so relevant you know global warming and all the war and the poverty and 
how we it's treat all, our veterans. All, yeah, it's all you all know, all. you can't, don't talk about my mother and father. You know, we just have to love each other. Mm -hmm. We can't, I mean, what's going on, you know, with the Tea Party and this and these ultra conservatives and mm -hmm. Democrats and independents, the war that's going on on women right now. It's is sad it, because that song is such a classic, mm -hmm. but the fact that it's still so relevant. Isn't it so? It, 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 it is sad. It is so sad. So well, let's talk about some happy things. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. you're talking about a bit. Well, you know, the happy thing is everybody loved Marvin Gaye's music. Right. Um, you know, in my travels, I've all nationalities, and I say I'm doing a Marvin Gaye song, and oh, we grew up listening to Marvin. Mm. And he just left us a, 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 a wonderful array of music that radiates even now. And, and the happy thing is that he's a visionary. Mm. Mm. Uh, he was such a musical visionary yeah. and, a, and a visionary when it came to the world, and the happy thing is that we can have this sad subject, and as we've seen, you know, Whitney, and this one and that one, that we can use this, like in tribal terms, when they mm. say, if you slay an animal and you use mm. everything for the nurturing and good mm. of the tribe, then it won't be all to waste. Mm -hmm. You've not, so the, the very good thing is that Ziola wanted to do this mm -hmm. so that she could help to save other, lo other mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who may be Which going through addiction, mm -hmm. who may be going through things, and in our, African-American and, and African communities all over the world, we sometimes find it hard to deal with dysfunctions mm. in, an, in, an, in an out front way. Yeah. You know, and say, look, you just need help. In the closet. Let's Everything's just go. Right. Yeah, swept it, it, under it, the rug. And this, and this Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Come Ziola. on. This is the good part yeah. about tabling these things. And Ziola it's not comes out at the end. And oh, herself. Really? She comes out oh. at and the says end. says why she and, did this. And, and, okay. and so not only is, a, is it a a tragic piece, but it's also an educational piece. It's inspirational. It makes you laugh and cry and shout at the same time. It's very entertaining. Yeah, I have to tell you. I mean, we have fun. <laughs> yeah, we have Before fun. people cry, <laughs> we have fun. they laugh. They're having we a have good have time. A, a lot. It's, it's, and we yeah. have fun. Well, it seems like you guys are also having fun, but helping a lot of people through yeah, whatever they yeah, may be going yeah. through. So congratulations on that and all Thank the success you. with it. But we also have to ask a little bit about your careers. Cause you, I know you guys have been in the business for years. Do you think things have gotten better for actors of color? Are things getting better? Um... I think things are better, mm -hmm. but I think things need to get continue to get better. Okay. I think we have more African Americans behind the scenes, and we just need to keep the progress coming. We need to create more roles for African American women. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have more producers in uh, studios and, and distribution, and we, we still have to keep pushing. What do you think, Lynn? I mean, you won an Emmy in 1991 for playing Josephine Baker, so... I know. The business has been good to you. The business has been good to me. Actually, we need more, but I'm excited, very excited, because I feel like needing more um, shines a light on me doing more mm. and, and me filling in that gap. So I'm, you know, getting lots of material and and just want to have a hand in it, you know, so that this chapter of my life, I mean, there's a, a bit of a legacy. Um, You're being modest. I don't <laughs> think so, because there's, I think there's so much more to do. I really ge genuinely. Well, since there's so much more to do, what will you be doing next? Well, next well all right, in terms of things <laughs> that are on the boiler now, an uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, independent film that I did called King's Faith, okay. which is about um, a, a white kid edging out, uh, aging mm -hmm. out of the foster care system, oh. wow. uh, oh. taken in by a foster Great. family who just lost their son, mm -hmm. African-American, with, me, me, with myself and James McDaniel as the parents. Okay. It has an inspirational message, and next month is foster care month. Okay. So that's kind of exciting. I saw some of the footage, and I... And I think it tells the truth. And met with some of those foster, older foster kids, 28-year-old mm -hmm. foster kid, wow. uh, yeah, 22-year-old yes. foster kid, and That's their parents, great. seeing that it's never too late to never deposit late. into a kid's life. And then I'm the new voice um, for a crime, uh, those crime, real, real, realistic crime dramas, the reality mm, crime okay. drama on okay. TV One called Fatal Attractions. Uh -oh. And I guess that they got me because I was we, Brandy Webb and Finn Lines. Love it. Hey. We're going to be watching all that. <laughs> we have to get ready to go, but I just want to check with Clifton and see what else he has I'm, before I'm, we, I'm, 15 I'm seconds. Riding, I'm riding with Marvin Gaye until the wheels fall off. All, all right. right. He's not it. telling because I I'm, know. I'm having a ball. But I just, we just had a, a piece airing on, uh, air on TV One called The Under Shepherd with.
uh -huh. uh, Lou Gossett, myself, Keith, Wa I mean, uh, Isaiah Washington, and uh, Lamont Rucker. So I'm excited about people seeing that piece. And North Star, which you're producing. And the North Star, which, which is did. hopefully will come out next year. Okay. Yeah, all, both too busy, too busy, doing everything. And the play is called My Brother Marvin, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. All right. It's, so at the, it's at the Beacon this mm -hmm. weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Two right shows Saturday. The Beacon City. this weekend. Yes. Well, I know what I'm doing this weekend. You got that right. If you all don't come, we're going to be mad at you. Okay. We'll we want to come backstage afterwards and tell yes. you we enjoyed it. Yes. And can that? I just congratulate you all for oh, this thank show you. and oh, your oh, outreach? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Makes thank me you. so proud, and it's very yes. important. Yes. Yay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. On that note, you're watching. Watching Arise Entertainment 360.